Oftentimes, many people are not aware that those living with autism also have obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah, and to talk about the similarities and differences between the two and to help raise awareness about autism, uh, we have Heidi Light with us as well. She is a certified behavioral analyst with Duran Academy. And we also have Sandra Stewart, whose son Peter battles autism as well, OCD, and of course, general uh, disorder as well. So good morning, ladies. Thank you so much for being Hi, with us. Appreciate this. This is a very important topic, mm -hmm. uh, and it affects so many of us out there. So. Uh, we're going to start with you, Heidi. Uh, for, for, for most people, how do we kind of even know that we're dealing with some auti uh, autism symptoms to begin with? Well, generally, autism spectrum disorder, it's characterized by some speech and language deficits. Um, so some children might not speak at all. Some children might use one word. Um, it's also characterized by deficits in social engagement with others, so people might not be able to take the perspective of, the, of other people. They might not be able to read nonverbal cues. Okay. Um, and then the, there's sometimes where you might see some re repetitive behaviors or, or rigidity, mm -hmm. special interests, things of that nature that, that are less typical than what you see in the community. And how is that being treated? Because I know some people can fall in different areas on the spectrum. So how do you treat that? Well. There's a lot of interventions out there. The National Autism Center posts um, empirically validated evidence year to year. And in 2012, there were over 500 some interventions that were validated. Most of them were based with some um, behavioral background. So what I do, I'm a board certified behavior analyst, and it's practicing the principles of behaviorism to kind of improve each individual's life to kind of a degree that works for their family and their community. Okay, and we mentioned that the differences between obsessive compulsive disorder and autism. So maybe kind of talk about the differences as far as how we categorize uh, each disorder and maybe why sometimes it, there's a perception that those with autism, you know, we kind of embrace those tendencies and maybe OCD, uh, folks are always trying to change that perhaps. Is there a difference there? Well, there's some similarities. With autism spectrum disorder, you can have a coexisting condition, like uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, where you engage in those ritualistic types of behaviors. Right. Um, with obsessive compulsive disorder, when you do not have autism, you still engage in those obsessive thoughts and those compulsive behaviors, but you have a little more understanding as to why. With autism spectrum disorder, you don't always understand why. Right. Right. And Sandra, you said that your son is diagnosed with this. When did you notice this? I, Peter was diagnosed when he was five. Yes. Um, prior to that, we had met a couple different neurologists, and at the time, they were just saying, oh, maybe just a language delay because Peter wasn't connecting his words in the conversation. And we're looking at uh, so, pictures yeah. of your son as, as he's talking. <laughs> um, so. so, yeah, so he was five when he was diagnosed, mm -hmm. and as he got older, more and more of the OCD, the, com the, the compulsive behaviors, the anxiety, the stress, it all started to, to brew probably around seven, eight. And um, now we're, you know, we're in a much better place, but mm -hmm. there's still a long way to go. Right. We want to add, <laughs> Peter's now 18, is that yes, correct? So, and obviously mm -hmm. you saw those pictures. Yeah, he, he's yeah. a very uh, good-looking young man. Thank he's you. Got, obviously, you know, he's got a, 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 he loves to, like, look, he was already posing for the camera in some of those pictures. <laughs> yes, too, he so. was. Um, talk a little bit, obviously, some advice you can give to other parents, because this is something <clears throat> that, you know, we tend to say that a, a child, um, is, is diagnosed with autism, but it's mm -hmm. really the entire family that is, Absolutely. and you all have to kind of yes. deal with it. So maybe talk about maybe some, some quick things that you could, could help other families that are perhaps just going through this now. I would say, and it was frightening for me um, when Peter was first diagnosed, because you feel alone. You, you, you don't know where to turn, right. who to go to, because it's all new to you. It's like sure. autism, what's this? Right. Um, the best advice I can give is to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Right. Get the support you need. Reach out to family. Reach out to friends. There's a lot of local support groups in Pennsylvania. The resources are out there. The resources are out there. Mm -hmm. You just have to. You just have to be the mom detective that you are and right. go out there and and look for the the, um, the the services that your your child needs. They're out there. But I guess the biggest piece of advice is um, ask for help and take time for yourself. It's a, it's a hard job. Very hard. <laughs> hard jobs, yeah. you take time for yourself. I love that, great good, answers. Good advice. Ladies, thank you all so much for coming on to talk about this very, very important topic. Yeah, and we'll have some more information on, on, what, on some tips and some information, uh, how you can get information on our website, phl17.com as well. Mm -hmm.